Okay. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Most Merciful, I bear witness that there is no God but Allah. And I bear witness that Muhammad is his messenger, my dear beloved family, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, those of you who are tuning in from wherever you are this evening. I bear witness that there is but one God whose proper name is Allah, who came to us in the person of Master Farad Muhammad. And we can never thank Almighty God Allah enough for searching among the lost people of the Western Hemisphere, the black people, the people who are enslaved and destroyed for some 400 years, and finding a humble, beautiful black man. I'm speaking of none other than the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, that man who we know today to be the long awaited Messiah and the exalted Christ. And we wouldn't know anything, dear family, myself, and those of us who claim today to be believers, we wouldn't know anything about this mysterious, great human being called Master Farad Muhammad, nor would we know anything about the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, the man who gave us Malcolm X, Muhammad Ali, and so many more huge personalities, huge, characters back in the 60s and the 70s. And we wouldn't know anything about this man. We wouldn't know anything about our founder unless it was for this beautiful human being who lives today on planet Earth. And I'm speaking of none other than the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, the man who the United Kingdom government has banned from coming into this country since 1985, 1986. But despite the ban, the word that he carries from the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad is so powerful and so penetrating that immigration control had no chance of stopping it from coming through that border. And this is what I intend to share with you this evening, just a little minute fraction of a part of those teachings given to us by the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Dear beloved family, in those three wonderful names that I've quoted thus far, I want to greet you in the greeting words of peace. We say it in the ancient tongue of Arabic, a language we once spoke, and today we attribute it to some other people. We think it belongs to other people when in reality, we are the originators of that original tongue called Arabic. Assalam alaikum. Those words when translated from Arabic to English simply means peace be unto you. And that is the spirit, dear family, in which I come before you today. And sitting next to me is my great, wonderful helper, our beloved sister, Sister Claudia Muhammad. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Most Merciful, I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and I bear witness that Muhammad is his messenger. I greet you all in the greeting words of peace of Assalamu alaikum. How are you all, family? Thank you once again for your time. You know, we really appreciate it. And I pray that you are all praising God, Allah God, for the many countless blessings that Allah is blessing and us mercies. with. Yeah, merciful God. And can we just say, you know, I don't know how many of us actually watch our sister Ava Muhammad's Janaza. You know, we're so blessed with Minister Louis Farrakhan. What, what would we do without that man? That's right, beloved. That's right. Praise be to Allah. It's such a beautiful ceremony. And of course, we were once again very blessed just yesterday, um, to hear from our beloved minister, Minister Farrakhan, you know, really talking to the believers in the nation of Islam. And that message was just so powerful. It was literally, you know, around the four hour mark in terms of its length. Uh, but um, it's something for us to really feed on and attempt to digest because there's so much tremendous guidance for us there uh, to take us beyond where we are into a great 
and glorious future. Dear beloved family, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for tuning in once again to another episode of the Image and Nation show. And I've got so much to get through in truth. Um, I'm really wondering, last week we were a little bit um, short-winded in truth because we were paying tribute to our beloved sister, uh, Sister Dr. Minister Ava Muhammad. And we finished a little bit early. This week, it may be the opposite. We may go beyond uh, the eight o'clock. I'm going to always try to be around that mark, but, uh, uh, you know, I'm not going to be rushing to try to get through this particular subject matter because I think it's very, very important. But what I want to say in uh, our opening segment here is welcome, 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 dear beloved family, welcome to all of you. And please, as always, I would encourage you to call a loved one, call a family member and encourage them to tune in right now to the Image and Nation show, which is going out live on Zoom and also on YouTube. Dear family, when you tune in, when you share, when you like, when you subscribe to this particular channel, you are helping us with those algorithms. You are helping us to you know, further the growth and the development of our show. So I would encourage you to do that. Help us to help you because what our purpose is on the Image and Nation show is to bring light, life, understanding, energy, power, to inspire by telling the truth. It's not always the most palatable thing to hear truth, but nonetheless, it is the thing, dear family, and it's the only thing that will set us free from the prison that we have been entrapped in for hundreds of years as a people. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, you know, I just cannot thank you enough for the support that you have given us over the last 47 episodes. And we are now into number 48. And our title today is The Enemy Hiding in Plain Sight. The Enemy Hiding in Plain Sight. That's what we want to deal with today, dear beloved family, because, you know, um, it's really easy to point the finger out and to talk about hidden forces and dark forces and spiritual wickedness in high places. However, you know, we have to also take a really close up and introspective examination of how the enemy is made manifest today in so many ways not just in those dark and creepy places, not just in the traditional way that an enemy would normally come. We have to look at all of the manifestations of the enemy, and that's what we intend to do just in the brief time that we have together today. So, dear family, today I want to start off by showing you two contrasting things which demonstrate both our God-given potential to realize our greatness in the fulfillment of prophecy, and on the other hand, our capacity for utter depravity and the ability to sink into the lowest depth of Satan's world. This is what I want us to begin looking at. And by the way, I'm still wearing my uniform because I, I'm, we're still in that phase of paying tribute to our wonderful soldier, sister, sister, doctor, minister, Ava Muhammad. And I'm just feeling quite militant at this moment in time anyway. And it is, again, one of those things that I want to convey to the black man in particular, that brother, it's about time you and I became unified, uniformed, and become uh, one, that we understand that when we come together in a uniformed manner, this is the beginning of our victory, dear beloved family, brothers. The Honorable 
Elijah Muhammad said that our unity is more powerful than an atom bomb. Our unity is more powerful than a nuclear weapon. Our unity is more powerful than that hydrogen bomb. Understand how powerful the concept of unity or the practice of unity is. However, dear family, I've said this before, and I've upset some people when I've said it. We talk unity, but very rarely have we tried unity. There's a big difference between talking unity and walking unity. Dear family, I want you to take a look at these two contrasting things as we begin our program, Image Nation, this week. A young rapper by the name of Gunu is murdered. At his funeral, his body is propped up on stage at a nightclub. Watch this. This terrible, a dead body on stage, man. And they having a good time. Man, this is the day we living in, everybody. This sad, man. We in sad times. And, and y'all know, let me say this. There are so many young people want to go out like this young dude, like their favorite rapper. Seriously. They want to die young, to bring a body, to prop it up on stage. That's demonic. That opened doors for demons, man. And young people, they are fueled by this right here. It's sad when death is normalized and living long is unusual. Now look what we have come to. This is the world we living in now. Dancing around corpse. Because you know what? God is no longer in the house. And I'm telling you right now, y'all, the world is dark. And it's going to get darker. It's going to get worse. And I hope young people watch this. I hope young people watch this and learn. Jesus said, let the dead bury the dead. When there's nobody alive, then there's nobody can give life. And that's the problem. Dead people are leading dead people. Dead people are celebrating the death of dead people. If you're going to live in this world, you got to come out from this life and be separate. Because now, bro, I'm telling you, to get that RIP, these dudes going after that RIP. They going hard after RIP. Let me say this. When you get that RIP, you don't hear it. You don't know it because you're gone. There's no soul in that body. There's no spirit in that body. And young people are going hard for the RIP. They want their fans to say RIP. Or put on your wings and fly away when that's not reality. When you die, your soul have to answer to God. I'm telling y'all. This is real stuff. We live in, in a dark, demonic world, and it's right before our eyes. 24 years old, died before his time. And the people are promoting the lifestyle that led him to an early grade. I don't get it, but I understand. It's because we're living in the last days. And this is what the world looks like without God. Be blessed. Beloved family, I wonder if you heard what our brother was saying. I wonder if you saw the image of our young people propping up the dead body of their friend on a stage in a nightclub while they rave. Is it any wonder that the word rave and grave are basically the same word? Because we are like we're stark raving mad 
And our brother talked about God being missing from the mm-hmm. equation, God being missing from the scene. Do you understand today that we, today, the way we behave, we're almost like a death cult as a people? that we don't have a lifestyle, but indeed we have a death style. And that's why in the scripture, we are styled as dead people. Because this is the type of thing that we're doing. And did you know that our brother is not telling a lie or making up stories when he talks about many of the young people now literally celebrating death and wanting to have an early death and thinking that there is no such thing as living to an old age and that death is just now a natural part of their existence. And they they almost can't wait to be able to say RIP, to be able to put those flowers out and to write their little note or whatever and send their little messages on social media to to praise the dead. Mm -hmm. Just a quick question on that point. Do you not think it's because what they've been taught that they believe there's something else afterwards? Yeah, most definitely. I mean, it's a, it's, it's a great question in the sense that I think so many of our people are still caught up on this idea that this life that we're living is really nothing right. and that the life to come, the That's life right. after is really the great life. Yes. So why take care of this That's life? Right. Why live well? Why, you know, strive for longevity? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think so. I, I think a lot of our people uh, have been convinced of that because, again, you go to the funerals, and what do you hear the preacher talking about? Saying that they're, you know, they're in a better place. Yes, they're, in a better they're, place. they're looking down on us. That's right. You know, That's right. and, and, and you can join them soon. Yeah. And you'll see them soon. It's sad, beloved. Yes. It's sad. It's it literally is a death, death cult. So, dear family, by contrast, let's have a look at this now. Now let me say something right quick. I think back on the African-American people in America. I think how that they were taken against their wills, put in the belly of ships, brought over here, beat, cussed. Many of them died in the guts of those ships, thrown overboard. They were pulled from families over there. You ain't never heard a gut-wrenching song do you hear a black person sing one of those old black negro spirituals nobody knows i can't sing it like that see because i hadn't experienced what they be when you've experienced hell it comes out of the voice i said when you experience hell it comes out of the voice if you're one of those people that you got problem with black people or whatever you better shut your mouth because they're god's people you better hear what i'm saying to you you shut your mouth you better shut your white mouth You better shut your white mouth. I'm not kidding you. I know some of you is raised in the deep south and you is raised by prejudiced people and bigoted people. You better get that out of your system. You better get it out of your system. It'll cause you to suffer right along with those masters. It'll cause you to suffer right along with them. These are God's people. And I know that there's wicked and white races and wicked and black races and all that. I'm not justifying none of that stuff. I'm just saying God knows what happened to the black race. He knows how they wound up over here. And God is going to re- reimburse the black people for all their trouble and all their labor. You watch what I tell you. Watch what I tell you. So, what a contrast, dear beloved family. You know, it's really sad how so many people know our identity while we don't Mm. while we think of ourselves as these people who are only worthy of death you have other people who know the reality of who we are as the chosen people of god as the children of god the children of the most high god and that there is such a thing as divine retribution for what has happened to us and what continues to happen to us. And now they're trying to warn their own people to shut your white mouth and be careful how you treat these people because they are God's people. While at the same time, we are busy killing one another. Don't forget our subject this evening is the enemy hiding 
in plain sight. And what I'm saying, dear beloved family, yeah, we can point the finger at the white man. And, and if we did that, we would be 100% right and correct in terms of the historical wickedness that he has meted out to us, what he continues to do today, and what he is planning for us tomorrow. That's correct. However, there's another enemy. And that enemy is called the enemy within. We have to look, dear, beloved family, at the things that we are doing to ourselves, which is, believe me, a hundred times worse than anything any external force could ever do than when our own selves, you know, in Islam, we have a prayer. And in that prayer, one of the lines in the prayer says, Oh Allah, and I have been greatly unjust to myself. Can you imagine being unjust to self? If we are unjust to self, we could never be just to anyone else. But this is what I want us to appreciate, dear family, that we have to take a closer look at our behavior, our activity, man, because we're really hurting ourselves by not recognizing who we are, by being in denial about those who have come among us to be leaders, teachers, and guides for us, man. And we are reluctant to accept any kind of leadership, any kind of guidance that would give us direction and give us the ability to come out of the pit of hell that these people have placed us in. Dear family, Britain as a new prime minister in the form of Liz Truss, who like her predecessor, Boris Johnson, has in the past been caught in an extramarital affair with a married man, which ended in the breakup of his marriage while her marriage appears to have survived. I've got to pause just here, dear family, to let you know some of you will already know, but I believe this just been announced that the Queen of England, Elizabeth II, who you see in the picture here, shaking hands with Liz Truss, about to make her the new prime minister. The news, I believe, is that she has now just passed away. And I have to say, dear beloved family, we do not mock the dead. We do not rejoice over the death of any person. And what we say is that this was inevitable, as is the inevitability of the death of the evil that has permeated this system, which she was a part of. But make no mistake about it, as their system, their government, their world unravels, this is just another piece in that unraveling puzzle that we are witnessing, the passing of their monarch. And of course, there will be an utterance or an exclamation of the queen is dead, long live the king, as they swear in a new one to take up her seat, be it William or Charles or whoever. It really is actually quite irrelevant to us as a people. Go ahead, sister. Well, it says here in the Sunday Times, it says her eldest, her eldest son, Charles, is now king. There you go. So Charles will become king. And in the future, going forward, I, I will go a bit deeper into all of these things because all of it has been written in the scriptures, dear family, and we will highlight and demonstrate what it all means according to scripture. In this picture, in fact, in the newspaper that they published this picture a couple of days ago, they were pointing out how if you look at the queen's right hand, it was actually blue. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you could see that she was, I mean, she has cancelled, recently cancelled many, many engagements because, of course, uh, she is up in age in the 90s, and 
is was very close to death. And of course, what has happened now today confirms that reality that she is no more of this life. Dear beloved family, the government has changed in terms of the figurehead called prime minister. But make no mistake about it, you know, the face and even the gender might change. But the lion and the unicorn remains the same. Truth, lion, mixed with falsehood, unicorn, equals the rule of the devil or Satan. See that emblem there in front of her? A lion and a unicorn. Dear family, did you know that the lion is real and that the lion is African? There is no indigenous lion in England or in Britain. But what is a unicorn? It is a mythical creature that does not exist. But when you put the two together, you're mixing truth with falsehood, which is giving you a clue to the type of devil rule that we are dealing with. Some of us will be happy and excited that, oh, a woman has ascended to the prime ministership for the third time after Margaret Thatcher. And what was the other one's name? <laughs> we always forget, isn't it? Yeah, what's the name? Theresa, yeah, May. Theresa May. Instantly forgettable. Hmm. She wasn't like the Iron Lady, Margaret Thatcher. Iron Lady because she was as tough as nails. She didn't give a damn about anyone or anything. And she was tougher than all the men in her cabinet. And now we have a third woman. But some of us might be fooled by her high heels. But remember, the devil wears Prada. Just remember that just because she may wear a dress and heels doesn't take away from the fact she is one of the, the most vociferous warmongers right now pushing this war in Ukraine. And she has dedicated Britain to this purpose, promising that they will continue to supply weapons to Ukraine and training to Ukrainian forces to continue and keep this war going, which, as we have stated in the past, will escalate and quite possibly will turn into what's called the Third World War or the War of Armageddon. So, dear beloved family, this is where we are. We're, we're living in momentous times. Mm -hmm. During the Imagination Show, we could announce that the Queen of England is dead. That's the reality of the times in which we live in. That's momentous. That's monumental for this country. And the repercussions will be felt and will continue to be felt because, you know, the white man's world is built on confidence. And when major events such as this take place within his world, it shakes and it rocks the confidence of the nation. And if they don't have continuation, if they don't have somebody who can take up that um, baton and run with it, then, you know, things can very quickly spiral out of their control. We're living in those kind of momentous times, dear beloved family. Staying with Liz Truss, According to a Daily Star headline two days ago on Tuesday, the 6th of September 2022, Liz Trust fans swoon over PM's raunchy Red Devil outfit in resurfaced Instagram snap, which is featured here. I can't, you can't see the full dress, but apparently she was wearing this devil outfit, full red and with the little devil horns on top of her head. And again, you know, I'm just kind of letting you know, because this is one of the great tricks that they use to fool black people. And, we, you know, we fall for it hook, line and sinker, thinking that the devil has got something to do with horns, right. uh, you know, red. a tail, red. pitchfork, the color red, mm -hmm. underground. Come on, man. Devil don't look nothing like that. As I said, the devil wears pinstripe suits. Mm -hmm. He wears Prada. Right. He drives in the back seat of 
Bentleys mm -hmm. and Rolls Royces and Maybachs and you name it. And uh, he is an international banker, okay? And he's about the business of bankrolling uh, countries or destroying countries, all right? Using his monetary economic systems. Dear beloved family, Image Nation promoting and advertising goods and services for the benefit of our community. Please take note of the following and lend your support. Nia's Bean Pies, visit Instagram at Nia's Bean Pies or call 07956 127 7 one two seven nine seven five that's zero seven nine five six one of the original zero seven nine five six numbers wow. meaning i think we said last week that the person they has always bills. paid <laughs> their bill and they never lost that number zero seven nine five six one two seven nine seven five it is a sweet dear beloved family this wonderful bean pie that's healthy all at the same time, a sweet that's healthy all at the same time. That's rare. You know, sometimes we, we've got to watch the, our sugar content. And I'm not talking to you necessarily. I'm talking to myself. I'm one of those. I've got this sweet tooth. I do like my sweets. Dear family, visit www.naturesharproducts.co.uk and try the moisturizing hair and scalp oil, as well as beard oil and other natural hair products. Check out the uh, Nature's Hair Products. We've had orders recently from all the way from Los Angeles, mm -hmm. and I believe that those persons have had their orders fulfilled by the grace and mercy of Allah. Also, visit www.p2bb.uk or londonstudygroup19.org. That's londonstudygroup19.org and order your proud to be black t-shirts, caps, and mugs and say it like you mean it, dear family, P2BB. In other words, proud to be black. And Go just ahead, to sister. say on that, um, proud to be black, they do ship to the States. Okay, just, you know, for those of you who are wondering, uh, if you, you want your proud to be black t-shirts or caps or mugs in the United States of America, I've just been rely reliably informed by Sister <laughs> Claudia that they do, yes, they do ship, ship to, the United, to the United States. All praise is due to Allah. Dear family, visit the tribe at www.tribenation2019.com and pick up one of their garments. Visit the tribe at www.tribenation. 2019.com. Beloved brothers and sisters, and by the way, um, you know, just in case, for those of us um, uh, on, on Halloween, uh, Halloween night 2019, the new Prime Minister Liz Truss wrote the following words taken from the movie The Usual Suspects. This is what she wrote. Uh, Halloween 2019. She wrote, the greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world mm. he didn't exist. Mm. See, don't, don't, mm. don't think that it's just us who goes to the cinema and that's we right. we see these things and we think, hmm, that's interesting. Mm. No, no. Liz Trust, she's aware of who she is and they are very, very clever mm. at disguising their identity. She then wrote, hashtag devil you know mm. hashtag usual suspects hashtag happy halloween. halloween dear beloved family the british people are hit are in for a rough ride mm. get ready because you know we are about to see some things unfold in this country those of you who live here you should have heard all of the predictions already about what's coming this winter in terms of winter fuel bills and the astronomical cost that it's going to cost the average consumer. And of course, we don't even come into the category of the average consumer as black people. Most of us are below the level of the average consumer in terms of our income and our expenditure. And so they are predicting dire straits and problems this winter for people trying to heat uh, 
eat their house and heat and heat <laughs> heat i'm a jamaican i, no, I struggle eat. with <laughs> <You said laughs> well it's either eat or heat <laughs> oh, right. yeah they're saying that there's going to be people are going to have to be juggling between eating, eating or heating, or heating. Mm. yes so you know it's uh this is the type of things which are going on all as a result of Britain being a part of that coalition that is trying to cripple Russia with sanctions while Russia continues to um, prevail and seems to be untouched by all of this stuff in truth, while this country in Europe goes down the pan and it is just the ordinary people who have to suffer. I can assure you that Liz Trust will not be suffering, struggling to either uh, eat or, or heat. heat. Okay. Can uh, I just take you back? No, go ahead, here. sister. Um, the video that you just showed our brother Yon Mohammed said there was a monetary charge to attend the funeral. Tickets were sold, and there have been arguments saying that this type of funeral is normal and part of the black man's culture. Wow. I hope everybody <laughs> heard that. What well, Sister Claudia just quoted from Brother Yon Mohammed in the States. Because this is, I'm saying it's a death cult. It's becoming more and more normalized, uh, dear family, where we, you know, we've got so much love and so much respect for the mm -hmm. dead. Mm -hmm. That's right. <laughs> but for the living, that's my nigger. That's right. You know, it, it's sad. It's very, very sad. And for all of us who may still be distraught and upset at the fact that the so-called brown man, Richie Sunak, was not selected, forget about any election, hmm. was not selected for the highest office. You need to dry up your tears and think again, because if he was prime minister, things would be even worse for black people. Right. Please just reflect on Home Secretary Pretty Ugly Patel. Okay, just think about it, because I know us, we... we you know, some of us fall for this hype that, oh, if this little man, this little brown man had got into the office, somehow that would benefit us. Don't forget, Barack Obama got into that uh, White House. Mm -hmm. What change for black people? And in truth, under him, things absolutely got a lot worse, especially when it came to uh, extrajudicial killings by police on the streets of America. So, dear family, it's not about going into that system and attempting to change it from the inside. It really doesn't work like that. It's about us creating for ourselves our own That's system. Right. We can't join okay. Satan's house. Come That's on, Satan's man. House, Come on. It? That's right. And then you're going to try and fit into his house. Yeah, you're going to try. Work. You're going to try and change Satan's mm -hmm. house. That's right. How? How? You know, we have to give freedom, justice, and equality to each other within our own house. We have to create a beautiful house for ourselves. That's right. And that house will bring down their house. Mm -hmm. Because when you have a, as the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, when you have a clean glass right. and a dirty glass, ultimately offer it even to a, 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 to <laughs> a down and out person, somebody who, you know, is not clean themselves, say. What, which glass do you think they're going to choose? The clean one or the dirty one? Come on, dear family. You know, we have to get real about what's going on in this world. Neither Richie Sunak nor Liz Truss was ever going to bring about any meaningful change for us as a people. Dear family, and again, like I said, if, if, you, if you really understand the dynamics of this thing, it would have been a lot worse. If asked the question, which of these two is the biggest white supremacist, most of us would get the answer wrong. The embrace of Modi, this is the Indian prime minister, is pure love, admiration, and wanting to be, while Trump is asking himself, what's up with this guy? I mean, you can look, just look at the body language of the two men. You know, one's absolutely in love, while the other one is just, just basically, you know, wondering what's going on. What kind of an, an embrace is this? Because, again, you need to understand who people are. 
dear beloved family. According to a woman called Aidita Chowdhury, a PhD candidate in science and technology at York University in Toronto, Canada, writing this article for Al Jazeera in December 2018 about Hinduism and its deep roots in the philosophy of white supremacy, she says, white supremacy and Hindu nationalism have common roots going back to the 19th century idea of the Aryan race. <laughs> Did you know that these Hindus see themselves as white people? This is, this is you gotta understand why some of us as black people, we're always wondering how is it that we go in their shops, give them their, our money in their hand and then they put our money on the counter, right. refusing to put their hand anywhere near our hand. That's because they see themselves as Aryan and superior. This woman continues to write, in the 1930s, German nationalists embraced the 19th century theory that Europeans and the original Sanskrit speakers of India, who had built the highly developed Sanskrit civilization, which white supremacists wanted to claim as their own, come from a common Indo-European or Aryan ancestor. They subsequently built their racist ideology on the assumed superiority of this pure race. We could, we, you know, we can't understand why, you know, you have your uh, pretty ugly Patel talking about, you know, there's no racism. Why you have these black politicians who are in the Conservative Party talking about, you know, there's no systemic or or, or, or institutional racism. Because at the end of the day, dear family, they have to join that system. Mm -hmm. They have to become a part of that system, become subsumed by that system, even for that system to allow them in the first place to claim to be a part of it. And the Indian one in particular uh, loves that system. Mm -hmm. And when you go back to India, you'll see that, you know, their behavior towards black people, this is where you get the Dalits and the untouchables from, is absolutely diabolical. The blacker you are, the darker you are, the more untouchable, untouchable. you are. Mm -hmm. The lighter you are, you'll see them, they go out with parasols That's or right. umbrellas in the That's sun because they don't want themselves. to get dark. dark. They want to, they see themselves as white and pure. Mm -hmm. In the book of Revelation, chapter 18, verse 1 to 5, it says, And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lighted with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen. This is the time we're living in, dear family. Mm -hmm. Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Dear family, this is not talking about birds. This is talking about human beings with the same attitude and mentality of those scavenger birds, those predator birds like vultures and eagles and other birds, which are unclean birds. It's such a shame dear beloved family, that so many of us have been drawn into the satanic way of life while having little or no comprehension of how compromised we are. I'm going to make that entire statement again. It's such a shame that so many of us have been drawn into the satanic way of life while having little or no comprehension of how compromised we are. We have become compromised. We have become complicit, a part of the satanic way of life. And that has to be acknowledged in order for us to make a change. My dear brothers and sisters, as we continue, once again, welcome to the Image a Nation show, episode 48 entitled The Enemy, Hiding in Plain Sight. Understand that when we look in the mirror today, we must see, dear family, that we are the sons and daughters of God. 
and not the sons and daughters of Satan. This is what we have to evaluate within ourselves. Can we go to our beds at night, put our hand on our heart, and say categorically that we have wronged no man or no woman, that we have not meted out evil to other human beings, that we have not backbitten, that we have not slandered, that we have not betrayed, that we have not hated on our fellow human being. This is really, really important for us to begin that self-analysis, self-examination, and self-correction, which is the principal teaching within the nation of Islam, championed by our beloved sister, Sister Minister Dr. Ava Muhammad, star of God, who is the star of God, hmm. and who really, you know, did such a magnificent job right. with those study guides and. Mm -hmm. We were reminded last night by the Honourable Minister Louis Farrakhan of the magnificent mm -hmm. job that she has done with Study Guide 22, mm -hmm. which is on its way to us in the future. Dear family, it is so important that as a people, we do not allow ourselves to be a part of a world that is absolutely unraveling as we speak because of the evil mm. that is fundamental to a world like this. It is essential that you and I begin to look at ourselves and to measure ourselves against that world and to measure ourselves against the man of God who is in our midst, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. I can assure you, dear family, None of us is going to, having measured ourselves, see ourselves as perfect. The, the perfect one is will be lying. Hmm. But the point is, the scripture says in the Holy Quran that our good should outweigh our evil. Dear family, as an example of what I'm talking about, let's take a look at one of the songs by one of the children of the Most High God and how he became notorious in the celebration and glorification of self-hatred and death, all the while being rewarded, being rewarded by this world. Hmm. You know, I love this brother. I think his, his name was Christopher Williams, but he became known as the notorious big, Biggie Smalls. And, you know, dear family, we must appreciate where this cult of death comes from. It didn't start with Biggie, but Biggie became one of the principal architects being used by forces that he didn't even appreciate were promoting what he ultimately manifested. But it's very, very real. And at the same time, I would also like to try and break down another song this time by a white man whose lyrics show clearly the innocence, beauty, strength, dignity, and humanity of a black man caught in a system of lies, hatred, murder, and injustice against the people of God. I, I hope you can see something that I'm doing here tonight. I showed you black people worshiping death on a stage. I've showed you a white preacher making it clear, unambiguous, that black people are the people of God. We're going to break down two songs, if it be the will of Allah, I'm going to really try to do this. It may get a little bit confusing because I'm going to do them simultaneously. Where contrasting what the black man is saying, one of the children of God, and what the white man is saying, who we know to be the children of Satan. Hmm. But do we understand how even a white man can go against his nature and do good and do God's will, while at the same time the black man will go against his nature and do absolute evil? Dear family, we need to 
fix this thing up because we cannot afford to be in this condition and to be so hmm. manifestly wrong that it's obvious to the whole world. At this time, let's check out a few more of our sponsors before we go a little bit deeper into our subject. JJ Sorrel Products, check out at Sorrel 2020 and try some of the beautiful Sorrel products produced by JJ's Sorrel Products. You know, you got Sorrel Jam, you got Sorrel Juices, you got uh, cakes, you've got so many wonderful products that comes from this hibiscus plant called sorrel. Also, dear beloved brothers and sisters, what we do here, so much of it is about our contemporary reality as we are, but in truth, so much of what I like to talk about is really trying to set up something for also our future generations. And so I would invite you to check out WYLA, which is the West London Young Leaders Academy for Boys and Girls, age eight to 16, producing our future leaders. Please visit www.wylauk.com and get your young person enrolled so that they can have their leadership qualities, their leadership potential stimulated that we can guarantee ourselves a future by preparing our young people from now. Dear family, visit once again www.naturesharproducts.co.uk and try the beard oil, specially formulated hair butters and so much more from Nature's Hair Products. And finally, don't forget, brothers and sisters, visit our YouTube channel at the Nation of Islam London Study Group New. And please, once again, like, share, and subscribe. And if you would like to help us financially, please click that donation button and give whatever you can give to help us to continue this program, Image a Nation. Dear family, Ready to Die is a song written and performed in the early 90s by the notorious big Biggie Smalls. It goes, yeah, yeah, you ready? MFs, I hope you all know what MFs means. We're going to kill your ass. I'm ready. As I grab my Glock, I know you, again, you should know that this is a, a pistol. As I grab my Glock, Put it to your headpiece, one in the chamber, the safety is off, release, straight at your dome, that's your head, Holmes, I want to see cabbage, Biggie Smalls the savage, doing your brain cells much damage, Teflon is the material for the imperial, Mike Ripper, girl stripper, the Henry Sipper, I drop lyrics off and on like a light switch, quick to grab the right, uh, this is uh, the, the word, that the, the female dog, as they like to describe the female. Quick to grab the right bit and make her drive the cue. 45 glocks and texts are expected when I wreck the S-H-I-T. You know, dear family, I, I don't know if we understand the power of lyrics and how when you combine lyrics with that tough, solid mm. musical beat. Why, when you see people at concerts watching their favorite mm. stars and they're singing along to all the songs and they know all the lyrics and they know all the rap lyrics, do you understand that when you, when those lyrics become a mantra in your life, how they go into you and permeate your brain and your whole system, and they eventually become a part of you, driven in by the beat of the music? Do we understand how this stuff affects the listener? Dear family, in 1976, Bob Dylan, the white man we're talking about, wrote and performed the following song lyrics 
to raise funds and to campaign for the release of Ruben Hurricane Carter, a black man wrongfully convicted of triple murder. Listen to his lyrics. Pistol shots ring out in, the, in a barroom night. Enter Paddy Valentine from the upper hall. She sees a bartender in a pool of blood, cries out, my God, they've killed them all. Here comes the story of Hurricane, the man the authorities came to blame for something that he never done, put in a prison cell, but one time he could have been the champion of the world. It's a white man talking about a black man. And, 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 and what you got to understand is that when we're accused, man, ain't too many of us come to defend us, you know. But now we're going to return to the lyrics of Ready to Die by our brother, Biggie Smalls. Respect is collected, so check it. I got techniques dripping out my butt cheeks, sleep on my stomach so I don't F up my sheets. Huh, my... S-H-I-T is deep, deeper than my grave, G. I'm ready to die and nobody can save me. F the world, F my mums and F my girl. Come on, man, my God. See, see, but, but remember, you got young people just chanting along with this, repeating this. This is a song. It's out there right now. You can go on YouTube and play it. My life is played out like a jerry curl. I'm ready to die. Think about that, man. It's a young man. I think he died when he was 23 years old, shot down like a dog. As I sit back and look, when I used to be a crook, doing whatever it took from snatching chains to pocketbooks, a big, bad MF on the wrong road. I got some drugs, tried to get the avenue sold. I want it all from the Rolex to the Lexus. Getting paid is all I expected. Those are the lyrics of our brother, Biggie. We're gonna go back now to the song written about Hurricane by Bob Dylan. Three bodies lying there, does Paddy C, and another man named Bello moving around mysteriously. I didn't do it, he said, and he throws up his hands. I was only robbing the register, I hope you understand. I saw them leaving, he says, and he stops. One of us had better call the cops. And so Paddy called the cops and they arrive on the scene with their red lights flashing in a hot New Jersey night. Dear family, I'm juxtaposing these two messages because they're both dealing with serious issues to some degree, they're both, you know, some of our young rappers, they like to say they're keeping it real, right? Well, I would suggest that, yeah, okay, maybe Biggie was keeping it real. Maybe that was his reality. That's how he grew up on those streets, on those mean streets, in that ghetto-wise reality. I can't sit here and talk like I'm some kind of innocent party because I too came up rough and bad on those the mean streets of London. I too did some crazy stuff as a teenager. And so I can identify, I recognize it, I understand. But what we're talking about here is the level of degeneracy that we come into to the point where it becomes normalized as our way of life. And so many of our young people are growing up. This was in the early 90s, man. And this has come down and this stuff is now standardized kind of stuff that's out there mm -hmm. in music now, what we call music, dear family. And that's why the young will think that's normal. It's normal. The young people think it's normal. They think that this kind of talk, talk this kind of language, this type of characterization that's of right. themselves and, right. and, and, and families. Listen to because you know, it's not like Biggie is just demeaning other people, black people, or whatever. He's demeaning himself. Listen yeah. to the, his description of his own self. Right. And that's the plan of the record label. Exactly. Exactly. So here's Bob Dylan. That, that was Bob Dylan. We're going to go to the next set of lyrics from our brother, Biggie. Let me just take a little sip of water. And while you're drinking water, because remember with Kanye West, mm -hmm. remember he had the song Jesus Walks. He didn't like that. Yeah. didn't like that song. Yeah. 
And anytime we put out anything on an uplifting, powerful level, they slate That's it. That's right. They, they, they condemn it. That's right. And then our people, you know, move in a different, in another direction. Mm -hmm. I mean, they do that. I mean, it, it happens in the, in the world of acting. Everything. The world of Hollywood. When you want to be correct. Exactly. Where anybody, you know, like what they did to Wesley Snipes and all these brothers, you Lauren know, when, when he played Blade, yes, yes, you know, yes. strong mm. hero, mm. black man kind of thing. And then the next thing, oh, they, they put him in a dress. dress. Put him in a dress. They've got to break us down. Remember Lauren Hill, her lyrics, so powerful. Awesome. They tried to destroy her. Awesome. But, you know, it's sad, you know, beloved, because, you know, Lauren Hill, she is one of the classic examples to me of such a beautiful sister, such she a is. powerful sister. But, 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 you know, many black people, man, talk ill of that sister mm. in terms of her just trying to be right. That's right. You see, it's like we're not allowed to be right, right. and to, to try to buck the system mm -hmm. and fight against the system, then, then our own people start to call us crazy right. and mad. Mm. Let's continue. Thank you, Sister Claudia. Let's continue with Biggie. My mother didn't give me what I want. What the F? Now I got a Glock making MF duck. SHIT is real and hungry how I feel. I rob and steal because that money got that whip appeal. Kick niggas down the steps just for rep. Any repercussions lead to niggas getting wet. The infrared at your head, real steady. You better grab your gun cause I'm, cause I'm ready. I'm ready to die. Yes, I'm ready. Now we ain't gonna kill your ass yet. We're gonna make you suffer, so die. Uh, mother effers die mother effers die i mean my god man what a mantra mm -hmm. what a mantra of death and you see dear family i just want you to imagine for a minute that these lyrics that biggie smalls that tupac Shakur, that all of them were voicing on on vinyl and on tape against one another and against black people. I want you to imagine for one second that these lyrics were talking about doing these things to white people. I, I just want you to imagine just for one second, how long do you think that record would last? How, how, how much promotion do you think that record would get? And in fact, how long before the artist <laughs> would be arrested as a domestic terrorist mm. talking that kind of crap That's about true. doing things of that nature to white people. Mm -hmm. I just want you to think, man, because it's perfectly acceptable to say these things as long as it's aimed and at directed ourselves. <laughs> at ourselves. My goodness. Back to Bob Dylan. Meanwhile far away in another part of town. Ruben Carter and a couple of friends are driving around. Number one contender for the middleweight crown. This brother was a, a, a fighter, a boxer. In fact, the film of his life was played by Denzel Washington. Yeah, Hurricane. You, you can watch it. I'm sure it's maybe on Netflix or one of those places right now. But you should watch it because it's a very compelling story. But Number one contender for the middleweight, middleweight crown. Had no idea what kind of SHIT was about to go down when a cop pulled him over to the side of the road, just like the time before and the time before that. In Patterson, that's just the way things go. If you're black, you might as well not show up on the streets unless you want to draw the heat. Hey, look at this white man is just telling the reality of black life in Patterson, New Jersey, back in that day. But I can assure you that same thing is going on right now, today, in all of the major cities of America and the UK. Just a couple of days ago, they shot and killed another black, young black man. I think they say he's 24 years old in this country. And they, seems to, they seem to be very, very quiet. Again, he's supposed to be one of these rap artists or grime artists. Um, who 
possibly has been killed by the well, not possibly was killed by the police, but as yet there are very few actual facts that have been re re uh, released to the public as to the circumstances of this death. Dear family, back to Biggie. In a sec, I throw the tech to your effing neck. Everybody hit the deck. Biggie about to get some wreck. Quick to leave you in a coffin for slick talking. You better act like CC and keep on walking. When I hit you, I split you to the white meat. Hmm. See, think about that, man. Here's somebody talking about chopping somebody with some type of weapon right down to the white meat. Just imagine the graphic nature of the description of, of what you want to do to another black person. Because the skin's black, but you want to you wanna chop them so deep with a weapon that it goes to the white meat. You swung a left, you swung a right, you fell to the concrete, your face, my feet. They meet with stomping. I'm ripping MCs from Tallahassee to Compton. Biggie Smalls on a higher plane. Niggas say I'm strange, deranged, because I put the 12 gauge to your brain. Make your SHIT splatter. My God. And, 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 and make no mistake about it, dear family. Understand what I'm saying to you. Biggie Smalls, his raps was so clear. Some of these rappers, they, they, they just sound like they're talking gibberish because you, you can't even really, they, 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 they haven't got the, the, the talent really to express themselves. And so, so, so much of it is unintelligible. Biggie Smalls, he was a master hmm. at the, the expression of the spoken word, even though that word was so degenerate and disgusting. And that's what made him all the more popular and all the more successful because he made it so plain in terms of the type of carnage that he was rapping about. And then that his beats were absolutely magnificent. They were powerful. As a black person, you couldn't resist those beats because they were so heavy. And so the whole thing bad lyrics and good beats were just compounded into your brain and into your being, man. Back to Bob Dylan. Alfred Bellow had a partner and he had a rap for the cops. Him and Arthur Dexter Bradley were just out prowling around. He said, I saw two men running out. They look like middleweights jumped into a white car with out of state plates and Miss Patty Valentine just nodded her head. Cop said, wait a minute, boys, this one's not dead. So they took him to the infirmary. And though this man could hardly see, they told him he could identify the guilty men. Four in the morning, they haul Reuben in. They took him to the hospital and they brought him upstairs. The wounded man looked up through his one dying eye, say, why do you bring him? Why do you bring him in here? He ain't the guy. So here's the eyewitness immediately saying that Reuben Carter is not the person that he saw leaving the scene of this triple murder. But the police nonetheless have brought him trying to get a misidentification because this is the reality of what black people face in a world like this, dear family. Back to Biggie. Mix the blood like batter, then my pocket gets fatter. After the hit, leave you on the street with your neck slit down your backbone to where your MF in SHIT drip. The SHIT I kick, ripping through the vest, Biggie Smalls passed in any test. I'm ready to die. I'm ready. Yes, I'm ready. Time to go. We got to put you out, your misery, MFers. Ningers definitely know what time it is. Yes, I'm ready. The notorious one in full effect, 93. Yes, I'm ready. Uh-huh. Yes, I'm ready. So die, mother effers. Die, mother effers. Die. Suicidal. I'm ready. Yes, I'm ready. So die, mother effers. Die, mother effers. Die. My God. Dear brothers and sisters, man, I'm talking about a death cult. I am talking about the enemy hiding in plain sight 
The enemy is within us. We have become our own worst enemies and we've got to change this thing up. Those of us who are parents, we've got to address our children, man. We've got to talk to the youngsters. We've got to stop being afraid of our own youth. We've got to challenge them in the things that we see them doing today, dear brothers and sisters. Because the things that they are doing today are the things that are absolutely about their demise and their inability to have any kind of future. Back to Bob Dylan. Here's the story of the hurricane. The man the authorities came to blame for something that he never done, put in a prison, put in a prison cell. But one time he could have been the champion of the world. Four months later, the ghettos are in flame. Rubens in South America fighting for his name, while Arthur Dexter Bradley still on the robbery game and the cops are putting the screws to him, looking for somebody to blame. They haven't got a genuine suspect, but they're going back mm -hmm. to these criminals who one of them confessed that he was trying to rob the cash register in the place in order to try to get them to misidentify this black man, Ruben Hurricane Carter. Let's go on, dear family, with Biggie Smalls. Listen to how he switches at the end of the song entitled Ready to Die, Biggie Smalls writes and performs. Now I lay me down to sleep, yeah. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take, cause I'm ready to die. All you all MFers, come with me if you want to. Biggest Smalls, the biggest man, rocking on and on. It's 93, there's a year 1993. Easy Moby, Third Eye, and the rest of the bad boy fam. I don't wanna see no crying at my funeral. You know, if you listen to a lot of Biggie's lyrics and even Tupac's, they, they many times over, they predicted their own demise. Because as we said at the beginning of this particular show, there is a death cult now where mm -hmm. many of our young people, they don't see themselves reaching old age. They don't see themselves having any kind of longevity when it comes to life. Because death is the new culture. And that has to be turned around, dear brothers and sisters. That has to be turned around. I hope everybody is good. Continuing with Bob Dylan, whose his real name, Bob Dylan, is Robert Zimmerman, I believe. I think he is Jewish. But, uh, you know, I, I tell you straight up, man, this is like a, like a country and Western type of song. But when I heard this song, when I the first time I heard this song many, many, many years ago in the uh, late 70s, early 80s, I loved it, man. I loved the song because it, it just spoke to me. It, I recognized the themes in the song, but it was coming from a white man. And I, I'm saying this to say to all of us, you know, I know there are many of us probably watching, listening to this now, you think, oh, the Nation of Islam, we're, we're a bunch of racists. Let me tell you something. In the Nation of Islam, we don't believe in racism. We don't practice racism. And we don't care where truth comes from, man. If it comes out of the mouth of a white man, we're going to acknowledge it as the truth. This is the reality, dear family. Those of you who think that this is just about some name calling and calling white people names and just being some reverse racist. No, we ain't into that foolishness because that's not, that's not going to empower us. That ain't going to give us no strength. No, we're about truth. And they call us racist. We don't give a damn what they call us, man. We're just about telling the truth based on the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad has taught and exemplified by the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. We don't care what names you want to call us. Because while you call us names, we just keep rolling with that truth, wherever it comes from. Our philosophy is freedom, justice, and equality, regardless to creed, 
or class or color. Okay, we we ain't going to be lining up against no white man who is trying to do good. We ain't going to be lining up against no white woman who is trying to do the right thing. We say all praise is due to Allah. We pray that Allah will recognize what you are attempting to do. I pray that Allah will recognize that white pastor who we watched earlier, who was confessing the reality of the identity of black people. And we want black people today who are wrapped up in evil doing to move away from such man and to study that scripture in, is it Second Thessalonians? The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan popularized it for us at the Million Man March on October the 16th, 1995. If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. Forgive their sins and heal the land. Dear family, this is, this is what's needed today. It's a small word, but it's big. If, my people, if we will turn from our wicked ways, if we will renounce Satan, then we have a chance, dear family, to come up from that pit of hell into a different reality of life. Let's return to Bob Dylan as we close out this evening. The lyrics say, police talking. Remember that murder that happened in a bar? Remember you said you saw the getaway car? You think it, you think you'd like to play ball with the law? Think it might have been that fighter that you saw running that night. Don't forget that you are white. Arthur Dexter Bradley said, I'm really not sure. <laughs> it's a white man because he knows it's not. But the police are now giving him some clues as to the avenue they want him to go down. Arthur Dexter Bradley said, I'm really not sure. The cop said, a poor, a poor boy like you could use this break. We got you for the motel job, and we're talking to your friend Bello. You don't want to have to go to jail. Be a nice fellow. You be doing society a favor. That son of a bitch is brave and getting braver. We want to put his ass in stir. We want to pin, pin this triple murder on him. He ain't no gentleman, Jim. My God. It is. Again, I, I would encourage all of you to go to YouTube and find Bob Dylan's song, Hurricane Carter, because it, it's, it's, like I said, it's country and Western. I mean, that's not my style of music. That's not necessarily your style of music, but you know, if you can listen to the lyrics, man, and you know, the music complements the lyrics in the way in which he does it. Carrying on, Rupert, uh, Biggie's track is finished now, as we close out. Ruben could take a man out with just one punch, but he never liked to talk about it all that much. It's my work, he'd say, I do it for pay. And when it's over, I'd just as soon go on my way. <laughs> Humble brother, middleweight contender for the, for the, for the, for the middleweight crown. But, but, you know, he was a knockout artist, but he was a humble brother all at the same time up to some paradise where the trout stream flow and the air is nice and ride a horse along a trail. But then they took him to the jailhouse where they tried to turn a man into a mouse. All of Ruben's cards were marked in advance. The trial was a pig circus. He never had a chance. The judge made Ruben's witnesses drunkards from the slums. To the white folks who watched, he was a revolutionary bum. This is how, you know, they, they, they falsely accuse us. They put us on trial. Mm -hmm. And to the white people watching, 
They, they painted him as some kind of revolutionary black man who was just like a, a bum, okay? And according to Bob Dylan, he says, and for the black folks, he was just a crazy nigga. See, this is how, you know, all they got to do is put us on the TV, mm -hmm. put a mugshot up of us That's and right. slander us a bit. And, you know, there'd be plenty of us mm -hmm. seeing him as some crazy deranged killer, having no idea right. that this man has been fitted up, stitched up, set up. Hmm. And no one doubt that he pulled the trigger. And though they could not produce the gun, the DA said he was the one who did the deed and the all white jury agreed. Reuben Carter was falsely tried. The crime was murder one. Guess who testified? Hmm. Bello and Bradley, and they both badly lied. And the newspapers, they all went along for the ride. How can the life of such a man be in the palm of some fool's hand? To see him obviously framed couldn't help but make me feel ashamed to live in a land where justice is a game. Mm. Dear beloved family, Bob Dylan continues, now all the criminals in their coats and their ties are free to drink martinis and watch the sunrise while Reuben sits like a Buddha in a 10 foot cell, an innocent man in a living hell. Yes, that's the story of Hurricane, but it won't be over till they clear his name and give him back the time he done. Put in a prison cell, but one time he could have been the champion of the world. I can't remember exactly how long our brother served, but he served a lot of years, dear family. And then he was eventually released and exonerated from that false accusation. And I'm not sure if uh, Reuben Carter is actually still alive. I think he may have passed away uh, not that long ago. I'm going to double check those things. But, you know, it'd be good for you to do a little research and, as well and check it out for yourself, dear family, because Reuben Carter's story is not just about an individual. It's really the story of so many of our people who have been through that. I mentioned to you before in one of the other shows, a brother who served 40 years for, again, a crime he never committed. And there's so many of them, dear family, so many of us who have had to endure this type of thing. Whilst at the same time, we have some of our other people playing into the hands of the wicked system with our lyrics, with our behavior, with our actions, fitting this stereotype of us as the killers, the muggers, the murderers, the rapists, the, the drug dealers, the drug pushers. Come on, family, let's get back to our nature. Go ahead, sister. Yes, Reuben Carter, he died um, 20th of April, 2014. 2014. Mm. Does it say how long he actually served in total? 20th of April, 2014, our brother passed away. Mm. But mm. his story is profound in its meaning and the, the job that Bob Dylan did in recounting that story in order to fundraise for his release um, will live on forever yeah. because it was tremendous. He served almost 20 years. Served he? almost 20 years of his life for that false accusation of a crime he did not commit. Mm. Dear beloved family, thank you so much for tuning in with us once again this evening to the Imagination Show. Thank you so much for spending time with us as we attempt to demonstrate that with imagination, with thinking, we can develop our own world. You can image a nation. Imagination is a faculty that is so powerful, man, that if you can see it in your mind's eye, you can make it manifest into reality. And that is what this show is all about. We only point out the negative 
to demonstrate and to juxtapose that against the positive. The positive being our aim and purpose, our direction of travel. But in order to understand what is really and truly positive, we have to understand what is negative, detrimental, and is not good for us. Too many of us today are conflating good and evil like the devil does with the lion and the unicorn. There is no relationship between the two. But when they put them together, they make you to believe that now maybe the lion is mythical. Maybe the lion is not real. And in reality, dear family, we are the lion who remains asleep in Judah. And the question is asked, who shall awaken? And we have a man today, dear family, who is a lion among men, roaring in the wilderness of North America and the Western Hemisphere, waking us up and calling us back to our God, calling us back to our true way of life, which is righteousness and righteous conduct. And I'm appealing to us, dear family, I don't know how long we will have the opportunity to conduct these shows. I don't know how long before Europe becomes a theater of war, which it will become. Make no mistake about it. I don't know how long before Europe becomes a graveyard, which it's on its way to become. But make no mistake about it. If we don't want to be buried in that graveyard, we have to come together and we have to do something for ourselves. And so dear beloved family, I'm gonna go back to Sister Claudia to see if there are any closing messages or words that she would like to say before we close out once again for the evening. And I'm really thankful and grateful for your being with us this evening. And may Almighty God Allah bless you. I pray that everybody is well and strong, healthy, and looking forward to what you can envision becoming a reality. Let us vision together. Let us image a nation together. And then let us build it together, dear family. And it starts with the rebuilding of the man and the woman. And from that man and that woman, we get beautiful well-rounded, well-balanced, powerful children. We have to rebuild the black family. Don't fall for this hype, dear family, where now a family is two women or two men. No, as I've said before, and I'll say again, even that lesbian and that homosexual and that transgender person today who really is so arrogant in declaring their status devoid of God. None of them could be here unless they came via the agency of sperm and ovum, the agency of man and woman, which is the agency put together by Almighty God Allah. Don't let people persuade you, convince you to go against your own reality of truth and begin to adopt a unicorn mentality when you know in reality what's true, what's right, what's just. Come on, family. It's time, man. Time for us to build our nation. Go ahead, beloved sister, Claudia. Asalaamu Alaikum, Brother Leo. Thank you for a beautiful meeting. I must admit, I, I didn't know the lyrics of Biggie Smalls. Oh, really? I, yeah, once I hear no, a swear word, it doesn't, I just switch off. Sister so. Claudia really doesn't <laughs> listen where, yeah. where I'll be listening to certain <laughs> things. And some, yeah. sometimes I say to her, come on, beloved, you got to... No, no, my, no I my don't wife, want to hear it. My wife refuses to listen to certain things or to watch 
particular things. Because again, the female is so sensitive, beloved. You know, it goes all into the womb, goes all into her being. So I don't, I don't blame her. Uh, I, I do that. I do that. Yeah, I, leave I that study for the that. men. Yes, I do that brother. because uh, you know I'm on that kind of front line of in the trenches in the in the war. But uh, yeah, go ahead. Sister. Yes, but just to say thank you everyone for your comments and thank you for tuning in. And as we know, it actually does. We know it starts with self. We, we can't look at others to change until we change ourselves. Then family, community, nation. Then what? Than the world. And I'll leave you with these words from our Messiah, Minister Louis Farrakhan. He says, when you love one another, that's when you have a heavenly life. Tune into the Criterion, watch it again, feed on these words. We've got to feed on Minister Farrakhan's words, who's the Messiah today, the modern day Jesus. When you love one another, that's when you, you have, have a heavenly life. A heavenly life. Because you can have peace. That's right, beloved. That's right. So thank you, dear beloved family. Thank you to Sister Claudia thank for you, those Robert words Ian. from our leader and teacher. May Allah bless each and every one of you as I greet you, as I found you in the greeting words of peace. Once again, we say it in Arabic. as Alaikum. Enjoy the rest of your evening, the rest of your day, wherever you are. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam, sir.